The Tiger Heavy Tank is one of the symbols of the Wehrmacht. This massive vehicle with its sturdy armor and a deadly gun left quite an impression on people, especially when it made its debut on the front lines. As you know, Tigers were unable to save Germany from defeat, but the work of German engineers had a lasting impact on the global tank industry. Naturally, Tiger tanks are available in War Thunder as well. They can be found at ranks 3 and 4 of the Ground Forces Tech Tree. Today, we're going to talk about the ways that you can unlock the full potential of these tanks. One of the key features of the Tiger is, naturally, its armor. The hull of the earliest variant of the tank, the H1, is protected by 102 mm of armor in the front and 80 mm on the sides. That's not that impressive for a rank 3 vehicle. At the right angle, the frontal defenses of the H1 can be pierced by both the Soviet 85mm gun and the 17-pounder of the British Firefly. And when it comes to the side armor, it can be defeated by even less powerful armaments. At the same time, even this variant of the Tiger can become an almost indestructible fortress, if you know how to position the vehicle. If you angle the tank slightly, its armor can easily withstand hits by rank 3 cannons. Just keep in mind that even a correct angling technique won't make your commander cupola any less vulnerable, and a successful penetration by a powerful APHE round will result in a knockout for three crew members in the turret. The Tiger can bring up to 92 rounds of tank ammunition into battle, but we suggest that you should never have that many explosives on board. It's more than enough to take around two dozen rounds. For instance, you can bring 20 Panzer Grenade APCBC rounds and 5 AG rounds in case you run into lightly armored targets. A PZGR round has more explosive filler than the 122mm shell of the Soviet D-25 gun. In other words, if you manage to pierce the enemy's defenses with your first shot, you probably won't need to shoot them ever again. Thanks to a good cannon with adequate accuracy, the Tiger's very effective at any range. It takes the gun around 8 seconds to reload, which is on par with medium tanks. At the same time, there are some notable opponents that you should be especially wary of, including the American Sherman Jumbo, which can be defeated by shooting at its machine gun port, and the Soviet IS, which has a vulnerable LFP and turret cheeks. We also suggest that you should be very careful when engaging captured Panthers employed by other nations. Aim at the mantlet or the commander cupola, as there's next to no chance that you'll be able to pierce the frontal plate. Pretty soon, the early H1 variant was replaced by the Tiger E. A new commander cupola makes this tank considerably more effective at close range, and a more powerful engine allows this Tiger to almost keep up with medium tanks. Almost. Another important piece of equipment is a new smoke system capable of firing smoke grenades one at a time, and not just in salvo, which allows you to be considerably more flexible with your smoke screens. Naturally, this improved version of the vehicle has some new, more dangerous opponents. The frontal defenses of the American T-26E1 Super Pershing and the T-26E5 are nearly impervious to shells fired from your 88mm gun. That's not to say that they can't be countered, though. The former can be eliminated by a well-placed shot to the turret, to the right, or to the left of the area covered by spaced armor. You can also damage its vertical aiming drive by shooting the springs on the turret roof. When it comes to the T-26E5, your best options are to flank it, or to destroy the barrel. Then there's also the Soviet T-44, which can be defeated with a shell through its turret cheeks. Fun fact! In the German tech tree, there is an alternative version of the Tiger, designed by Porsche. It has the same turret and armament as the production version, just with a slower turret traverse speed. Most notably, though, the turret is mounted on a completely different chassis. Compared to the standard Tiger H1, the VK4501P, which is a gift vehicle, comes with a different engine, a different transmission, and a different design for its upper frontal plate. This version of the Tiger has hull cheeks on the front of its hull, which means that you shouldn't angle it under any circumstances. What you should do instead is either keep your distance, turn the front of your hull directly towards your opponent, or engage your targets in reverse, so that enemy shots hit your transmission or actually bounce off of those cheeks. Don't worry about your speed. Thanks to a unique transmission, the tank moves just as fast in reverse. 
If you get used to it, this Tiger can be quite effective even as an assault tank. Just don't forget that it's not equipped with smoke grenades. It's pretty ironic, but the unique transmission that makes this vehicle viable in the game was one of the main reasons why this particular model was not picked for actual production. The premium Panzerbefehlswagen 6 is an up-armored version of the Porsche model, fitted with additional plates in the front. You can play it as a Ferdinand Lake or as a normal Tiger. At the same time, despite a better armor arrangement overall, your hull cheeks still remain a massive weak point, and all that additional armor made the vehicle considerably less mobile. At rank 4 of the regular tech tree, we find the iconic Tiger II, also known as King Tiger. There are two variants of this tank available in the game, because the first batch of Tiger IIs, made by Porsche, had a slightly different turret with more vulnerable cheeks. Later Tiger IIs, made by Henschel, used a Krupp turret, which was sturdier and used more flat surfaces. Basically, with this turret, Soviet APHE rounds with calibers up to 100mm, as well as shells fired from American 90mm guns, pose no threat to you. At the same time, both variants of the vehicle store some of the ammo in the rear, and there's no way to move all that explosive cargo to another location within the tank, so any penetration from the back might take you out immediately. When it comes to other characteristics, the King Tiger is very different from the previous models in the family. It's less mobile, but it's also considerably tougher. With a massive chunk of armor in the front, World War II era rounds can only penetrate your defenses through the lower glacis plate or through the machine gun port. If you engage at distance, you're basically untouchable, especially when fighting opponents from the lower part of the BR bracket. All in all, this tank is best used at long ranges. Its quick-firing, powerful gun, extremely reliable shells, and good armor mean that you can hold your ground even against post-war vehicles. If you position your tank at a slight angle, your side armor can bounce enemy shells pretty reliably. Furthermore, even the slow acceleration and limited maneuverability of the vehicle might be a blessing in disguise, as it makes it easier to aim. When you stay in first gear, there's next to no gun bouncing. The most dangerous enemies that you can encounter in a Tiger II are vehicles with access to heat rounds and enemy aircraft. The former can penetrate your frontal armor even though they don't have much armor themselves. These are vehicles like the Rattel, a South African IFV, or the Italian C-13 T-90. And the latter? Well, when it comes to those pesky flyers, you just have to rely on your armor. After all, it is good enough to at least protect you from many aircraft guns. All in all, German Tigers are true breakthrough tanks. They can lead the assault and push the enemy right back to the gates of their own base. Are there any Tiger variants that you particularly like? Tell us in the comments below.